afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Trax FM's coverage of today's game between Savoy and Para Hills West, coming to you from Port Piri West Oval from our new sporting precinct. Joining me in commentary today, my name's John Caputo. Joining me in com commentary will be Corey Bellafemni. Welcome, Corey. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Good to be here again on a uh, nighttime kickoff, five o'clock kickoff. So uh, I think the second half is going to be under lights, which will be interesting. Okay, here we go. We're off. Um, Savoy versus Para Hills West. Para Hills get first position from the kickoff and then promptly kicked it straight out from Sean Robertson. Savoy will take the throw in. Once the ball's retrieved, Anthony D'Agostino to take the throw in to Samuel Spudovecchia. His brother Daniel Spudovecchia gets the ball. Blocked and another throw in to Savoy. Yeah, both the Spud Spudovecchia boys had very good games last week, so they'll be looking to uh, replicate that. Sure did. Uh, uh, Daniel Spudovecchia and Anthony D'Agostino on the wide uh, of the play both cause a lot of problems. Just a couple of early throw-ins to either team here. Just uh, hasn't really settled down yet. No one's had a decent touch. There's probably the first one. Ben Higginbottom to Samuel Spadovecchia to Jack Scoot. A 1-2 back to his brother Daniel. Get, tries a first time cross. Ricochets out and that'll be the first corner of the game to Savoy. The ball comes over. Not quite to a Savoy player. Tate Brook gets that inside the box. Can't control it. Cleared by Johnny Labrino. Dom Kane on halfway. Looks up. Looks for options. Goes wide to Carlo Labrino. On to Tate Brook. Back to John, uh, Carlo Labrino, but uh, the Para Hills West player in Stronsky has seen the ball go out. Here we have Ben Higginbottom with his trademark long throw. And there we go again. That's right to the six yard box, but the Para Hills keeper uh, is quite tall himself. He's, he looks to be about six foot three, so. And that was a delicate little header from Dom Kane back to his keeper when he was under some pressure from the, uh, the attacker from Para Hills West. Ball's in midfield in dispute. Goes out for a Para Hills West throw in. Yes, obviously Dom and uh, Nathan Brook got a good understanding there, but that, uh, that was running the gauntlet a bit, that one. It was. It had to be, uh, had to be spot on. Para Hills West just surged forward. Sort of a nothing kick. Ball comes to Ebert. Ebert to Stronsky. Stronsky to Johnny Labrino. Cuts it back to... Oh. Cuts it back to Jared Knoll, who had a reasonable amount of time, got a decent shot, but it just wasn't on target. Yeah, that was a golden opportunity there for Para Hills. Uh, good, yes. Good work from Johnny Labrino on the right for a cutback, and uh, he skied it from about the penalty spot but probably should have hit the target there really he definitely should have hit the target they're nearly on the 18 yard box cuts in Carlo Labrino cuts the ball back but I think it was offside yeah uh, it looked offside from when uh, AJ kicked the ball Parry Hills West Jordan Piles gets the ball to halfway drops straight to the Parry Hills player in Kemba Kemba passes the ball to Wallace but he uh Failed to trap the ball, it's gone out of play for a throw in. D'Agostino with the throw in to Samuel Spadovecchia. Can't control his header, and that's gone out of play for a Parry Hills West throw. Kemba takes the throw. He's gone all the way back to Robinson, Robertson. Well, there's a through ball to Johnny Labrino. Tate Brooks with him, but Johnny Labrino's quite quick. Brook covers that very well. The keeper comes over, and he's got it in his hand. That was, that was well covered by Tate Brook. Um, we know Johnny Labrino's quick, but uh, Tate Brook's probably just as quick. The kick in from the keeper gets to the line, but that's... Yeah, it looks like a bit of a dangerous avenue down that side with the Johnny Labrino side. He's, uh, yeah, oh, and that, that, that's where they go too. Yeah, they they cause, look for him. Cause some issues there. Yeah. Okay, Parry Hills on the ball. Get it forward. But Anthony D'Agostino comes across and covers. 
Uh, Matthew Stronsky on the left wing had that ball then. He's play, play, playing a bit of a different role, Johnny Labrino, than what he was when he was at Savoy, wouldn't he? I think Tate Brooks can have his hands full today, but definitely. he's definitely up for the challenge. Yeah, I think the fact that they played against him the first time, hopefully that will help as far as Savoy go. Samus Sparavecchia can't get his head on the ball. Para Hills West get the ball to the left wing. A first time ball, Reese Gillette. Gets the ball, gets it forward, the Parry Hills player can't control it. Scoot gets it on his left. AJ's on the left-hand side of the ground as we're looking at it. Gets to the 18-yard blocks, there's two players there. He's half beaten one, goes back, he's still covered by two. Looks to dink the ball in, but can't get it there. Savoy looking for the free kick, but nothing there from the referee. Johnny Labrino has the ball. First time, gets the ball forward on the right-hand side to Jared Noel, he's up against Reese Gillette. Noel gets the ball back, Parry Hills look to come inside. First time shot, not on target from Jared Ebert. The ball sailed over for another goal kick to Savoy. It was another, another surging run forward from Carlo Labrino. He's, uh, yeah. he's made quite a few runs out of the midfield, but yeah. I guess having that five in the midfield gives you that option of one it does. pushing higher and, you know, if they get caught out, he's still got cover behind him. Yep. Gets it to Carlo Labrino. He's on the ball. Slips it out wide to AJ. Savoy trying to attack. The ball goes to Scoot, but his man has uh, read the ball. Sean Robertson has read it better than him and got to the ball. Parry Hills go forward again. Labrino's in the middle of the park. Gives it to the Parry Hills player. Labrino gets it back, but covered again by Tate Brook. Savoy relieved the pressure to Carlo Labrino. He didn't really have anyone to give it to and just had to clear it to Tate Brook, who luckily the ball's dropped for AJ. AJ tries to beat his man, gets covered. And again, a good tackle from Matthew Stronsky on AJ has resulted in another goal kick to Savoy. Yeah, really strong challenge there from Stronsky. He's, uh, he's let AJ know he's around, that's for sure. So. So free kick on the outer side to Johnny Labrino. Very bit of, very nice bit of skillful play there it from was, Labrino. He yeah. sort of put the ball between his legs on an, on him whilst turning and uh, he was off then and he, I'm not sure he fouled him but yeah. he probably done a good job bringing him down. He did. <laughs> I think it was a free kick. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so Parry Hills West with the free kick from Sean Robertson. He looks to get it into the danger area, which is the 18-yard box. It gets there. Hits a Parry Hills West player for... Oh, oh I thought that was... No, nah, I think that's actually deflected off a Savoy player. Oh. Uh, so it's a corner to Parry Hills West. Gets the, about the penalty spot. The ball comes loose. It's gone in. Oh. It's gone in. The ball was a, a slight header down towards the six-yard box. And I can't quite make out who that was for Parry Hills West that's tapped the ball in. That's Stronsky, number eight. Number eight. Tapped. So the ball, the ball was headed from the corner, hit the ground, and he, he just got his foot in, and it was enough just to squeeze it between the player on the post and the goalkeeper. And Parry Hills West have taken a 1-0 lead at the eight-minute mark. Eight minute mark of the first half. So Savoy nil, Parry Hills West one in yet again Savoy this year failed to keep a clean sheet. Yeah, I, think that, I think that goal is one of the occasions where the initial header sort of misheaders it and it yeah. ends up finding its way to the back post who uh, obviously a par uh, Stronsky was relatively unmarked there for an easy yeah. tap in. So. There was a little bit of luck in there but you know what, sometimes you make your own luck, you've got to be in the right position yep. and he just squeezed it in between the keeper and the player so um, Parry Hills probably had the had most of the play to start the, start the game so probably be I don't know if I'd say deserved of a lead, but they, they looked like the team that was going to score uh, score first out of uh, what we've seen in the first few minutes. Samuel Spadovecchia gets the ball, goes to Scoot. Defenders ride on him. I think they'll be well aware of his uh, of his efforts this year in scoring 13 goals in seven games. They look, they look like they've, they've got him fairly well covered every time the ball gets near him. Parry Hills West with the ball on the right with Robinson. Samuel Spadovecchia clears that and that's going to go straight to the keeper in Jordan Piles. 
He gets it out to the right to Robertson. Robertson gets the ball to Ebert. Back to Robertson. S strong ball forward to the centre of the park. In dispute now from Parry Hills. A header back to the middle of the park. Noel on the ball. Gets it wide. Kemba back to Noel. Noel on the inside. Back to the middle. Parry Hills, a great build up. Nice shot. Straight to the goalkeeper. Yeah, nice strike there from 30 yards with the Parry Hills, yeah. uh, Noel. It was. Straight, straight in the arms of Dathan Brook, but it was a good strike. Brook releases the ball to Dom Kane. He looks for Samuel Spadavecchia. Savoy overrun the ball there. Wallace inside. Misses his player. The ball ricochets to Carlo Labrino, but he can't control it. And Noel gets possession. They go all the way back to Robertson. Robertson then goes wide to Robinson. Then he goes wide looking for Johnny Labrino. The ball's still in play, and that's a free kick to Savoy. Yeah, good Johnny body. Labrino just a little bit overzealous there, trying to get the ball as uh, Tate Brook was trying to let it run out. So yeah, free good, kick Good body Savoy. work there from Tate Brook. Took the hit and knew the free kick was coming. But I think last week, as I mentioned, John, the you know, Savoy came in the game when they started using Scoot to his feeder in the forward line. Very, very important that you know they try and use that option when, you, especially when you're playing a one-man forward. Yeah, it it seems that with Savoy, it seems that just about every game it, it it takes him a while to get to get to see what the opposition's about and, and get themselves organised. Um, it's almost especially mirror, going forward. You're right. Mirror image of last week how they sort of started. Yep. Until they opened up the game, the first goal, but yep. then the floodgates opened a little bit. Um, so the pressure's on, on Savoy to uh, I think there's to make light, the game. light rain falling, John. There is. Looks to be a little bit, yeah. Sun's out and the rain's out as well. Dom Kane intercepts that ball for Savoy, but uh, goes out of play for a throw-in just under the commentary box for Parry Hills West. I think when you're playing that one-man forward too, you're asking a lot of, of them. But yeah. So, you know, the least you can do is try and hit their feet and then That's run right. off, move off. Tate Brook gets there. Not sure of who was around him, so he clears it out for a throw-in. Yeah, well, you'd, yeah. Ra you'd rather see that clearance than the, uh, trying to take possession there with Johnny Labrino hot on your heels. Yeah, and I think what happens with Savoy a lot too is, is it happened last week is when they feed Scoot, they don't, they don't get close enough to him that if the ball does drop, there's no one there to give him a hand. And I think we mentioned that last week for about the first 15 minutes. And as soon as they, soon as they adjusted and made sure that there was players there to lay the ball off to, that was when Savoy started to look dangerous. So hopefully they can make that adjustment again. Jared Noel, again, their centre forward, gets possession. Now he looks back, and Robertson has the ball. He's at right full back. Looks to chip it up to the 18-yard box over all the players' heads. And again, that's gone out for a goal kick. Very similar, apart from the fact that there's been a goal to Parry Hills West, very similar start to last week's game, really. Savoy going forward, bit of confusion in the box there, but the keeper's out fairly quickly. Gets his arms around the ball and uh, controls it quite well. Drop kick from him, comes out to the left-hand side. I think that's Ebert on the ball. Through ball there from Simpson. Doesn't get to where he wanted it. Oh, Ben Higginbottom. Has, uh, has missed the lot, and the ball's gone out for a corner. Dangerous dangerous again, Parra Hills West from these corners. They're throwing a fair few players forward. He took a bit of an air swing at that. Ben he did. He hit his, hit his planted foot. Yeah, he hit his planted foot and, uh, <laughs> and went out uh, for a corner. And caused a few problems for him. That one for the highlight rule there for Ben. No. So I think it's, uh, I think it's the centre forward in Jared Knoll standing over the ball for the corner. Parra Hills West looking to increase their lead. The ball comes in, dangerous ball again, right on the six yard, on the penalty spot. The keeper gets his punch to the ball to AJ. AJ releases to Carlo Labrino, not much to go to. Got to go back to AJ. Over, steps over the ball, beats his man, then goes back into trouble though, and gets covered when he'd already beaten that man. Beats another man, and another one. Can't get past, tried to pass the ball to uh, Carlo Labrino who tried to let the ball run, but 
the Parra Hills players were uh, aware of what they were trying to do. Savoy really not stringing too many uh, accurate passes together here. Parra Hills West push up every time they receive the ball and, and uh, definitely put the clamps on. I think it's a different kind of battle this week as opposed definitely. to last week. Last week was a bit of a physical tussle it in was. the midfield, but it's more of a yeah, uh, technical challenge. Yeah, this the, the week Parra Hills uh, midfield is quite a skillful one. Yeah. This, uh, this week, so it's going to be a good battle for all involved there. The ball comes loose in the midfield. Parry Hills West look to go up to that left-hand side. Overcooks it from Stronsky. Higginbottom with the long throw. Gets over one Parry Hills player. On to Samuel Spadovecchia, who gets it on. Throw into Savoy. Quick throw in from Scoot to Labrino. Gets cleared by Parry Hills West. High ball. Reese Gillette. Headers the ball. Allen. Uh, Parry Hills West get the ball to the left. Then back straight back to the middle. But Tate Brook was well, well aware of what was happening there and had that covered. The ball comes out wide to AJ. Tries to beat his man and gets that out for a throw in. Jared Noel in the middle there seems to get a lot of the ball. When they go forward, they, they definitely look for him. Bad throw in there from Carlo Labrino, straight to the Parry Hills player. To Noel, he looks to just push the ball out to the right where he was assuming Johnny Labrino would be, but... Yeah, asking a bit of, ask a bit, a bit of Johnny <laughs> Labrino on that ball. You're not wrong. Reese Gillette with the clearance. Parry Hills get the ball back. A lot of interplay between their midfielders, which ends up with Johnny Labrino running onto it. Gets past... Covering there from Don Kane, that was a very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Labrino position. got past Reese Gillette when Reese Gillette looked like he had him covered, but uh, luckily the ball did drop to a Parry Hills player uh, and Don Kane had it covered, but has had to force the ball out for a corner. Yeah, now he's they've gone short, eyes. now they've broken it up. Short to Labrino, a chip in. Don Kane with the header gets the ball out of play, but Noel with the corner. Again, exactly the same spot. Six yard box, penalty spot. Cleared by Savoy. AJ gets onto it. Good first time ball. Could have been a free kick. Advantage played, I think, to Scoot. Scoot has the ball. And another free kick, and that will be a yellow card. Um, AJ is still down from the previous play. Crunching and tackle uh, there from Matthew Wallace on Jack Scoot. I don't it's really think well you've deserved got, a yellow. That's I don't for sure. think you've got too much to complain about getting a yellow card there. Um, was it Wallace or was it eight? Was it Stronsky? I think it was Stronsky. I think that's the that just highlighted the issue of uh, <laughs> with Jack Scoot's assault. He, had, he basically got the ball with no to one stop. to pass to. He had to, yeah. he had to re retreat. Um, so you know, one yeah. of the midfielders got to pick up on that and try and. Samuel Spadovecchi gets the ball. Ricochets off a of Parry Hills West player. For a throw into Savoy. Yeah, nice. Little, oh no, sorry. Throw into Parry Hills West. Nice little free kick over the top there from Labrino. It, it was Sam Spud met it at quite a force, but uh, got deflected out for a Parry Hills throw in. Stronsky with a header back towards the Savoy goal. A chip over and a header from Scoot. Great, great crossover from Samuel Spudovecchia. Scoot was trying to just get that to the corner of the of the goal. Didn't miss by too much, but. Um, has gone out for a goal kick. Yeah, really good from uh, Sam Spud there. He actually... F in Ebert. Ebert loses it. Savoy get the ball forward quickly. They're in their 18-yard box. Over oh. to Jack Scoot, who scores. A yeah. great goal from Savoy. The ball comes from the midfield. Quickly down the down the right-hand side. Samuel Spadovecchia, as he's done on numerous occasions this year, beat one player, got the ball to the byline, cut it back. Here he goes again, Jack Scoot, number 14 for the season. Left foot along the ground into the goal, left the keeper with no chance. Well, like I just explained the previous uh, effort, the same two guys were involved. But that was an awesome run from um, Samuel Spadovecchia. Surged through the corner of the 18, a lovely cut right across the box. Yeah. And that was absolute that was striker's dream to be on the end of them. Quality ball to, to the striker. But you still got to finish him. You do got to finish him, but... Uh, a very good finish too. But, uh, yeah, that's probably not the hardest goal he's ever scored. But, hey, there's pressure pressure to, to uh, score those goals. And, as we said, 
eight games he scored 14 goals. That's a fair effort. Parry Hills West look to go forward again. Savoy try and keep that in, but it's gone out for a throw in. So that's that's livened up the game, livened up the home crowd. One all. 23 minutes in. Parry Hills West have the ball. Noel again turns on it, gets a shot over. That's a decent shot, um, but just sailed high and to the left of goalkeeper Nathan Brook. Parry Hills West have the ball going forward to Noel again. Could have been a free kick. Played advantage to Stronsky. Goes out wide to Clark. Clark has the ball smothered and it's a throw into Parry Hills West. Probably a foul throw to Noel. Noel cuts the ball back, beats one player, gets the ball inside. Ebert has the ball. Takes too long. Gets dispossessed from Labrino. Labrino across to AJ. AJ's got no one really. That was a very ambitious ball. Um, but it, luckily it's actually gone to who it's supposed to go to in the first place. Is Daniel Spadavecchia who got fouled by Simpson. That was a Sim very crunching tackle that one, John. From and Simpson. and uh, he wasn't very happy that he got a free kick against him. But not sure why. But uh, anyhow, Savoy line up on the 18 yard line. Bit of pushing and shoving there. They clear the ball out. They look again to Gillette this time, but the keeper, that's twice the keeper's got his hands to the ball and dropped it. So, uh, um, yeah, he's a, he's a big, tall, strong lad, but um, under pressure, that's twice he's actually grabbed the ball and then dropped it straight away. Probably needs a little bit more whip on those free kicks from uh, yes. Labrino. Got to keep it away from this keeper. Quite so boy, he's going to take it. Turn the ball over. AJ's got the ball running towards his 18 yard box, tries to beat his player. Ricochets off both of their feet, comes back to AJ, inside to Samuel Spadovecchia, great run inside. Drops it back, unfortunately the, the Westies player cut that ball off, they couldn't clear it properly. Daniel Spadovecchia goes back to Dom Kane. Dom Kane looks up, not much to give it to, back to Daniel Spadovecchia, into Carlo Labrino. 50-50 tackle, ball goes in the air, Daniel Spadovecchia again. Anthony Dag D'Agostino, layoff to Labrino, first time to scoot. Not quite on target. Savoy mop up again. Go wide to Tate Brook. Tate Brook to AJ. AJ's flat-footed. Gets overrun by his player, Robinson. Robinson goes forward to Wallace. Wallace can't control the ball. Touched away by Gillette. Para Hills get it back. Gillette just gets the ball out. Luckily goes straight to Spudavecchia. Ball gets played through. Not offside. But the keeper's on task and gets and clears the ball. Daniel Spadovecchia headed the ball to his brother, but he couldn't keep his feet, and the ball has come to Parry Hills West. D'Agostino dispossesses Johnny Labrino. Dom Kane chips the ball forward to Carlo Labrino. He headers it. Daniel Spadovecchia to Labrino again. Scoot's got the ball at his feet, gets tackled again. That's uh, three crunching tackles in the last five minutes from Parry Hills West. And uh, I think number 16 in Clark, pretty sure he'd... No, he did get booked. Noel with the ball right on the halfway line. He looks up, not much to give it to as Parry Hills try to get out of their defensive half. Clark gives the ball out to Kemba. Kemba looks forward to Johnny Labrino. Nice step over. Gets half past D'Agostino. He checks back, looks inside. Samuel Spadovecchia, good tracking back to Gillette, to Kane. Kane, Kane to Daniel Spadovecchia. Nice touch. Great shield by Jack Scoot. The ball goes to Daniel Spadovecchia. Cuts back inside to Scoot. He tries to go across first time. Can't quite get its target to AJ. AJ ends up with the ball. Goes to Ben Higginbottom. He goes wide to Daniel Spadovecchia. Nice bit of play here from Savoy. Unfortunately, the ball is just over hit, but that was, that was some good, tight uh, play there where Savoy maintained possession and have, are putting the the opposition under some pressure. Yeah. Savoy have definitely, since the goal, have definitely improved and look like they're probably... Good little series of passes it there. Was. The yeah, it was. It worked quite well. The Spadovec is 
and uh, Jack Scoot together with Ben Higginbottom. Ball back into play. Scoot gets the header on it but can't control it and the referee is given a free kick to Savoy. So Division 1, Parry Hills West against Division 2, Savoy. At the moment, one all. 29 minutes gone. Ball's in dispute. Ben Higginbottom wins the header. Parry Hills player in Clark can't control it. AJ's got the ball to Carlo Labrino. Gets past one player. The ball comes loose. Ball high to Noel. Reese Gillette gets there. Samuel Spadovecchia can't get the ball. Parry Hills get control and an overlap from Kemba on the left-hand side. He goes first time to Noel. Noel's got some pace about him. Great header from Reese Gillette to Dom Kane. Dom Kane to Higginbottom. Higginbottom inside to Daniel Spadovecchia. He can't control it. To Scoot. To Sam Spadovecchia. Back to Scoot. Scoot's got the ball on the right, one-on-one. -on -one. Can he find AJ? That's who he's looking for. Ball's deep. Not deep enough, though. Scoot challenges his man and gives away a free kick. Yeah, good idea there from Scoot to see AJ on the left uh, making that run, but just uh, under hit the ball a little bit in the cross. But lovely play there through, uh, I think, Sam Spud and yeah. Daniel Spud. Seems to be the, getting uh, a lot of joy out of this side. The... Uh, the understanding, as you said before, Corey, of Samuel Spadovecchia and Jack Scoot is, uh, is very beneficial for Savoy. Higginbottom has the ball. Samuel Spadovecchia, he knows his brother's there on the, on the right, Daniel. He goes inside. Just didn't quite get the timing right with uh, Ben Higginbottom and Westies have the ball. They go wide to Wallace. Wallace on the ball. Savoy actually tracking back fairly well. Um, and they've got, now they've got Westies under pressure. Ball gets turned over. Luckily for Parry Hills West, the ball goes straight to Wallace again. And now they're back in control. Stronsky with the ball. Reese Gillette reads the play a little bit better than his player in Jared Knoll. But I think, can only put the ball out of play. I think the entire midfield have a good understanding yeah. as, with Jack Scoot on how to you know, play the system. and yeah. you know, they, they all seem to know where, where the ball needs to go, where they need to run. And what I like is they don't, pan not pan they don't panic on the ball. No, they don't. Okay, Parry Hills with a through ball. Gets the Labrino, but not quite. The keeper's there to cover it. Yeah, the Savoy midfield, uh, if they do make a mistake, they just get on their bike, get around and, and try and cover it, which is great. Nathan Brook with a very long kick, as he did last week. Not quite as long as the one last week. That's <laughs> dropped to AJ. He's on the ball. Ball goes wide to the left. Shoulder to shoulder with his man. Does a back heel, tries to get the ball deep. It is deep. Parry Hills West just get that ball out of the area. Lucky for them, it goes to the captain in Noel. He goes to Wallace on the right. Back inside to Simpson. Someone, Simpson to Johnny down. Labrino. Ball gets pushed through to Noel. Is that Carlo Labrino down? He's down and he hasn't moved. He's up, he's up on his haunches now. It's a throw in to Parry Hills West. Labrino's got up. He, he, it was a fair challenge between the two of them. I think he just landed awkwardly. Might have just lost his, lost his breath there for a little but bit. But in playing that uh, one forward striker with the five midfielders, you, you've still got to have the right person leading the line up front you to do. be able to hold that ball. And like I said many a time, Jack Scoot is providing that oh, he's for Savoy, which brings everyone else into the game and allows... <laughs> Some lovely little interplays in the midfield. Looks up to Johnny Labrino. He tries to get a touch, but Daniel Spadovecchio was, uh, was there to cut the ball out for a throw-in. Yeah, good, good pressure there from Dan Spud to force a throw-in. Yep. Cut, cut out a, uh, an attacking thrust. How long have we been playing there, Corey? Uh, 34 minutes gone, John. 34 minute mark. One all. Savoy one. Parry Hills West one. Sun is nearly down. The lights are starting to take effect. Nathan Brook with the goal kick. Comes wide to the right. Not under control yet. Daniel hey. Spadovecchia tries to get it under control but can't. You forgot to mention beers are flowing on the balcony, John. They are. Wouldn't mind one myself, actually. <laughs> A very big crowd here. A lot of the football people have stayed too, I think, by the looks of it, which is great. 
Uh, that ball just gets forced forward. Knowles under it. He's near the 18-yard box. Looks inside. Nice little chip into Johnny Labrino. He gets a little touch. Well blocked there by Carlo Labrino on the Parry Hills play. Gets possession. Gets out of it. Gets the ball to AJ. He's got one man to run at. He's now approaching the 18-yard box. Parry Hills track back fairly well. He looked like he overtouched that then. Overhit it. The ball lands to Scoot. He's got the ball at his feet. Unfortunately, Johnny Labrino's chopped in in there and got that ball out. But um, uh, Parry Hills West, again, tracked back as Savoy did previously. And now they've, they've got a man advantage going forward as Savoy try and track back and cover their players. Well held up there by Savoy. Johnny Labrino with the ball at his feet to Noel. Noel back to Labrino. Can't control it. Higginbottom now for Savoy. Yeah, that was a lovely defensive tackle from Labrino for to a yep. move forward. But I think AJ may have just held that ball just a little bit too yeah, long. I think he, he did. Sort of uh, ruined the run of Jack Scoot. Anthony D'Agostino looks for Scoot who'd come inside and D'Agostino <laughs> assumed he was going to go outside. Ten the, minutes uh, remaining. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. The goalkeeper in Jordan Piles for Para Hills West has the ball at his feet. Just about to kick it up, giving everyone a bit of a breather. He's in no rush to pick it up, is he? No one's in any rush to make him pick it up. He doesn't <laughs> pick it up. He plays it out to Clark. Clark has the ball, chips it to Kemba. Kemba on the left, goes straight inside to Wallace. He over, over hits it. D'Agostino gets the ball. D'Agostino gets it back again, but turned over again to Parry Hills West. There you go, back to Stronsky. He looks inside to Wallace. Wallace, they're just trying to keep control, and now they've just forced the ball high forward. Uh, and Reese Gillette's there to cover that. Carlo Labrino gets a push out, probably a free kick, but not given. Uh, ben Higginbottom covers up, keeps the ball in play, hits the power. He was West player for a throw. It'd be interesting to see how uh, Carlo Labrino can keep, how long he can keep up this intensity. He's made some gut busting runs through the midfield, and yeah. Having not playing every week, it'd be interesting to see how long he's got in his in his tank. He's had a couple of big hits too, so that's uh, that'll take it out of him. But yep, it'll be a good one to watch. His brother gets the ball, but can't control it, and uh, that's gone out for a throw in. So Parry Hills West, uh, when they scored, were definitely in control of this game. But after that, it's it's evened out now. After Savoy uh, hit back, and uh, see the scores now at one all as we approach halfway. Ball's in dispute in midfield. AJ just gets the ball forward any way he can. Savoy nearly had the ball. Labrino tried to header it, but actually headed the back of uh, the Westies player's head. So that'll be a free kick for them. Beautiful night here at uh, Port Pirie. Not much wind. It's very cold outside though, so it's... Uh, Lovely in the it's commentary It's a pleasure box, to be John. here in the commentary 23 box. 23 degrees. Beautiful. Yeah, might have to take my jacket off soon. Anyhow, Para Hills West go forward through Robertson. He goes wide, but uh, too wide. And the ball's sailed out for a throw in to Tate Brook and Savoy. Scoot gets the ball to AJ. He looked to go quickly to Samuel Spadovecchia, which was a good idea, but just uh, couldn't pinpoint the pass. Para Hills West have the ball back. Cut out by Ben Higginbottom. Daniel Spadovecchia on the ball. Doesn't quite control it, but gets enough to get it to his brother. Samuel Spadovecchia shapes to shoot, but doesn't. Beats his man again to the byline. Chips the ball over. Beautiful chip. Um, that, was a, that was a great position for a cross. Yeah, he done that really well, Sam Spuddy. Like you said, faked the shoot and went wide, beat his player, cut in and dinked, it up, dinked the ball up for just waiting for someone to yeah. be on the end of that. But uh, Normally Jack Scoot would yeah, be in that spot. Normally but, he is, uh, but it was a for once he ball wasn't, across. If he was, it would have been a goal, yeah. no doubt. Looks inside to Labrino. Nice control. Gets it off. Stronsky has the ball. He goes wide to Robinson. Robinson looks inside. Cut out by Carlo Labrino. He's got a man hot on his tail. Gets it back to Dom Kane. He beats one man, then looks to Labrino, and they go back to Reese Gillette. This ball will just sail forward as Gillette 
didn't really have many options to go to and uh, just cleared the area. A very cool, calm work there from uh, Dom Kane walking out of the fence. Look, always finds a target and hits feet, so yeah. never turns the ball over, which is uh, a good sign of a great defender. Okay, on the ball is Clark. Clark gets it to Simpson. Simpson to Noel. Noel's on the ball, gets it across. Wallace can't control it. Daniel Spadovecchia headers it. Just falls to Parry Hills West. Out to Kemba again on the left. He's under pressure. Higginbottom on his man. Kemba gets it back. Good first time, left foot cross. Dom Kane again cuts it off, but just had to clear it. It's gone to Parry Hills. And they look to go wide again. 40, 41 minutes gone. Clark to Robinson. He gets... Oh, that was silly play. Clark um, didn't beat his man. Uh, Tatebrook got the ball and then Clark kicked out at him. Uh, Tatebrook didn't really like that. I've and, seen... Uh, uh, back pushed, him, pushed him off. He uh, ran a bit of a fine line there, Tate. I've, I've, I've seen those being turned reversed, around to go yeah. the other way. But. The ball gets blocked and that'll be a throw in for Savoy. Not too long to go in this first half. I'd say about three, four minutes left remaining, John. Dom Kane with the throw in. Samuel Spadovecchia shoots the ball well. Parry Hills player gets in front of him. They look to go forward. Rich Gillette cuts the ball out again. He looks to go deep forward. The keeper's there. He's on a sprint with AJ. AJ's put him under pressure. And the keeper's done the right thing, got the ball out of play so his team can reset. Good result there from Savoy. A, it was. Ball, a ball out of nothing has turned yeah. into a throw in in the attacking third. Tate Brook, who's got quite a long throw as well, will take the throw. He's going to look for AJ. No, he just hasn't really gone to anyone there. Went straight to Robertson for Parry Hills West. Good control on the chest from Higginbottom. Dom Kane gets the ball. Doesn't quite drop. Luckily for Parry Hills West, drop Higginbottom with the shot. Didn't quite grab it, but um, had the keeper had the keeper rush into his right hand side to cover it. But um, he did have him scaring to his left, but he, it, did. uh, he didn't really get a hold of that one. No. Uh, ben Higginbottom and the referee half -time has whistle. blown for half time. So as it stands here at uh, Port Piri West Oval, see Savoy one and Parry Hills West won at half time. We'll be back uh, with our coverage in about five minutes uh, while the two teams have their half time break. So hopefully um, uh, you'll stick with us and we'll bring you the second half of this round eight game between Savoy and Parry Hills West, which sees the half time score line at one all. Okay, welcome back to this round eight game between Savoy and Port Pirie West. Uh, at Parry Hills West, at Port Pirie West Oval. <laughs> <laughs> um, header straight over the top. D'Agostino gets to the ball. Parry Hills West again through Wallace. Wallace back to Stronsky. Stronsky to Kemba. Inside again to Wallace. Can't keep his feet. Savoy smothering the ball but can't get possession. Number 14 on the ball, Ebert. He gets it wide to Kemba. Good first time ball in. Dom Kane there, good clearance. Johnny Labrino was waiting for the scraps there if that had gone through. Ball goes out of play from Samuel Spadovecchia. Yeah, another good covering uh, defensive effort from Dom Kane. Uh, foiled that piece of attack. Throw in from Parry Hills West. Carlo Labrino tries to clear the ball. Hits it back. Lucky Kane is in the way there. Gets it forward. No one can really control it. Parry Hills West come away with it to Johnny Labrino. Inside they go to Noel. Noel goes forward. Well covered. Noel's well covered by Daniel Spadovecchia. He goes out wide to Kemba. They look inside quickly. Dom Kane there straight to Jack Scoot. He can't control the ball. Parry Hills look like they've opened the second half up in a quiddy. A pretty quick pace, um, looking to looking to attack early and uh, and catch Savoy out. Now they're just uh, maintaining possession. Robertson 
doesn't look like any personnel Johnny changes Labrino. or posi positional changes have been made at half time. No, everyone looks like they're in the same spot. Hegan Bottom gets the ball. He gets blocked by Stronsky. Johnny Labrino looks inside. Tate Brook cuts that out. AJ lets the ball run onto Jack Scoot on the left wing. He gets the ball, looks inside. Can't control the ball. Higginbottom again cuts it off, shields the ball. In dispute again, Tate Brook gets his foot to the ball. Stronsky gets the ball, plays it back to Godfrey. No, not Godfrey, that is... Robertson. Robertson. Kemba looks wide to Wallace, but that's gone far too wide. Throw in Savoy on the outer side. Quick throw in from Savoy, right on the halfway line. Gains some meterage to Samuel Spadovecchia, running out of player, got one behind him, goes onto his left, has a shot. Nice shot, well covered by the keeper. The Parry Hills West players are not happy with the fact that Lebrino for Savoy picked the ball up, took three or four steps and threw the ball straight in. They thought that ball should have been taken from, from far back. Parry Hills West go quick, quickly forward, but once again, as he's done over his whole career, Reese Gillette reads the ball, and with his speed, just gets there and knocks the ball out for a throw-in. Savoy now tracking back. Yeah, good defensive play from Reece Gillette. You, you just become accustomed to him cutting out those sort of balls, and it just becomes second nature, so... Yeah. Ball comes out wide. AJ gets a touch to Jack Scoot. Jack Scoot with the ball at his feet. Gets it to AJ. He's got a man to his left. Gets a left foot shot. That was a decent shot. Too high. Um... But Savoy really did expose Parry Hills West there on the break with, with nice control from AJ to Jack Scoot. Control again, nice layoff. Running at the keeper, couldn't hit the target though, but uh, good to see. And, and, and I think it must be stressed that uh, as Savoy people, we, uh, we don't really take this into account, but this is a Division 2 team playing against a Division 1 team. So um, Savoy matching it with their... Uh, more fancied opponents. Carlo intercepts it from his own brother, gets it back, beats one man, and that's another free kick to Savoy. Yeah, the previous attack four was a lovely example of how well AJ and Jack Scoot worked with each other. You know, Jack held the ball up for just enough for AJ's run to be uh, come into play, and he released him, and yeah. AJ probably just took the ball a little bit wide on his left side, made it a little bit hard for the shot to uh, find the back of the net. Tate Brook gets the ball to about the 18-yard line. Samuel Spadovecchia with a good header. Goes straight to Parry Hills West to Kemba. Kemba looks straight forward to Ebert. Ebert looks to get that ball in as quick as he can to Wallace, but he's overhit it. The keeper's come out, got the ball at his feet. Good idea there from um, um, number... Who was it? 11? I think it was Ebert. Ebert? Yeah. That looks like a bit of a head clash with Gillette. Yeah. So um, Clark headers the ball from the goal kick, goes straight out. Scoot with a long throw this time. Right up the line, AJ has the ball. His player falls over. He gets across too close to the keeper, I think. Parry Hills clear it. Higginbottom gets the ball back and headers the ball. Unfortunately, goes straight to Parry Hills West. They come wide to Johnny Labrino. He flicks it inside. His player controls the ball with his chest. Higginbottom tracks back pretty hard. Very, probably the fittest player in the Savoy side and uh, gets that out for a throw-in. I think we can see early in this first half, six minutes in, the, uh, the attacking grandstand side, which is uh, yeah. AJ's side, is uh, going to be in play a lot of the, lot of the halves. 50-50 ball there, one by Parry Hills West to Kemba. He goes forward. Dom Kane, once again, reads the play very well, gets the ball out for a throw-in for Savoy to, uh, to get back and defend. Parry Hills West go back, all the way back to Robertson. He goes wide to Kemba. Again, he looks for Wallace. Anthony D'Agostino reads the play better. Daniel Spadovecchia to Scoot. Scoot can't control it. Spadovecchia again gets it. He can't control it. D'Agostino, he can't control it. This ball's in dispute. Now, the same thing happens to Parry Hills West. Samuel Spadovecchia gets the ball. He can control it. He gives a lovely ball to Jack Scoot. Not much forward for Savoy. They have to stop and wait for some reinforcements. That's a nice ball in from Higginbottom straight to Daniel Spadovecchia. 
Uh, but he can't uh, control it, and the Parry Hills West player sees the ball out for a goal kick. Yeah, good idea there, ball over the top, but the uh, defender shielded the ball out and made it a little bit hard for Daniel Spud to get around him. But, um, yeah, mo most of the play has been on the left-hand clearing side, well, I'll say the balcony side of the play for this half, but um, I'm sure the uh, Daniel Spud side on the right-hand side will come into play as the half progresses. I think Parry Hills West defenders are playing a lot deeper this half than they were last. Dom Kane tries to get the ball. Drops straight to Labrino. His brother Carlo gets it. Higginbottom tries to control. Unfortunately, bounces up, hit his hand. That's a free kick to Parry Hills West. Directly opposite the commentary box. The lights are starting to take uh, their full force as uh, day turns to night. Not quite night time yet, but... Uh, Beautiful viewing here with the lights on. Two teams, Port Perry West Oval. It's Parry Hills West with the free kick. Nice little chip over. That was a, looked like it was a set play to Stronsky. Luckily, Savoy were there to cover it. Cleared the ball. It's gone out for a throw in. Kemba with the ball to Stronsky. He looks inside, chips the ball over. Should be an easy one for the keeper. Got the ball in his hands. He yeah, just couldn't get, get control of the ball there, Stronsky. Let him get away from it. It was quite a dangerous ball over from the free kick. Savoy looked to go forward through Samuel Spadovecchia. The, the game's tied at one all. He beats his man. Gets a lovely crossover. Not quite on Jack Scoot's head, but not far off. Scoot with the ball at his feet. Go, takes his man inside. Gets into the box. Cuts it back. No one there, unfortunately, for Savoy. Nice build-up play again from Savoy. They look to be opening them up a, a little bit towards the, that right-hand side there where Samuel Spadovecchia has a deceptive turn of pace. He looks like he's, he's just strolling and then he goes past blokes. So, Parry Hills West with that ball goes straight out of play. Yeah, that combination, uh, again, looked quite dangerous. Just overcooked the cross a little bit, uh, Samuel Spud, but um, Jack Scoot was able to retrieve it, but um, no one... No one uh, in assistance for his ball over. Savoy win the ball back through Labrino and Samuel Spadovecchia. Labrino steps over the ball, looks back inside. Higginbottom's got a man coming behind him, and that's Labrino. Higginbottom does well to retain possession to Dom Kane. Dom Kane goes to Daniel Spadovecchia, who's flat footed, gets beaten for the ball. A strong, quick first time ball to the left full back in Kemba, covered by Dom Kane. Ball gets loose from Stronsky, beats Kane, looking to go forward, ball over hit to Johnny Labrino and Nathan Brook the goalkeeper it's Savoy 1, Parry Hills West 1 game definitely opening up, opening up now, I, was, I, I can foresee quite a few opportunities coming yeah. in this second half ball's at halfway for Parry Hills West to Noel, he steps on the ball, lays it across, they go wide to Wallace Savoy tracking back fairly well Simpson, he looks inside. I think it was offside, but the player didn't touch the ball, so it's play on. Noel looks like he's dropped back into the midfield. He was playing out and out centre forward in the first half. Scoot challenges with that ball, puts enough pressure on. Higginbottom has a fresh airy. Ball drops to Carlo Labrino. He looks up. Daniel Spadovecchia on the right. Plays it back to D'Agostino. D'Agostino's first time ball up the right wing. Scoot puts pressure on his player. Carlo Labrino can't control it, and that's gone out for a throw in in front of the Parra Hills West dugout. 11 minutes gone, still one all. Ball comes across. Carlo Labrino and Wallace. Wallace wins the ball. Robertson. Johnny Labrino on the, on the right hand side. He goes back. Robertson goes to Labrino. Well cut out by Tate Brook. Wallace has the ball at his feet. Nice little ball through the back of the defence to the left full back in Kimber. He looks like he's pushing. He looks like he's pushing forward, and I think that was similar to what we were saying at the start of the game. That's what they were doing in the first game, Corey. Yeah. He gets two fists on it and gets it out of the 18-yard box. AJ gets the ball first, tries to shield it. Robertson's with him, gets it inside to Carlo Labrino. Touch back to Tate Brook. Clears the area, gets it to Scoot. Two players nearly lost their feet in Scoot. 
and his defender. Savoy have the ball in their hand for a throw in. Actually, so Michael, Cla Clark. Michael Clark, yeah, defending yeah. Jack Skew, he's actually done a pretty good job. He's, yeah, he has. He's, he's uh, given away. He's a substantially bit of height. smaller, but yeah. uh, he's, he definitely does a good job in. Uh, yeah, he's strong. Tate Brook with a long throw. Parry Hills West just clear the area as best they can. Reese Gillette challenges. The ball goes to Tate Brook. He doesn't control the ball. Wallace has the ball at his feet. He gets past Gillette for the time being. Gillette covers. Labrino gets there to double. Now Tate Brook, small chip inside to Wallace. Again, again, Dom Kane there with the left foot to, uh, to get that ball out of the area. And that's where it's gone again. The, the ball's come over. Sammy Spadovecchia gets ahead on the ball. The ball goes back to Labrino. He's in the box. He beats one. He half falls over, but not really. Ball comes out to AJ. He's got the ball at his feet. Parry Hills West are tracking back well. It's a two on five. But now the ball's gone through to Daniel Spadovecchia. Couldn't control it, unfortunately. Ball's come out again. Back to AJ from Higginbottom. Ball at his feet. Carlo Labrino. Tate Brook, he'll switch to Dom Kane on the opposite side, which he does. Kane with the ball at his feet, looks up. Chip run to Samuel Spadovecchia, nice ball, chest it down, ball at his feet. Edge of the 18-yard box, can't quite control it, got doubled by the Parry Hills West players. Simpson from Parry Hills West has the ball at his feet. Plays it back to Kemba, the left full back. He's been prominent in, the, in these 10 minutes of the second half. His ball's cut out from Carlo Labrino. The ball's chipped over to look to Higginbottom. He's got the ball, can't quite control it on the edge of the 18. The ball breaks again for Parry Hills West. Stronsky with the ball at his feet. Carlo Labrino again cuts it off. D'Agostino cuts it off. Advantage played. Daniel Spadovecchia beats one player. Gets the ball inside to Labrino. Doesn't quite drop for him. Again, the ball gets turned over to D'Agostino. Again, gets turned back over to Clark, again to D'Agostino. Now to Daniel Spadovecchia, beats his man, he's wide on the right, gets a nice crossover, yeah. and he's hit the crossbar. Oh. oh my God, that was a great cross. Scoot got what he could on it, I don't think there was much else he could do. Unfortunately, the ball's hit the underside of the crossbar and gone straight to the Parry Hills West keeper. From what started Miles. from a sloppy piece of play, it was a beautiful cross from Daniel Spar. It was a great cross. There's about four turnovers in that whole play. And rocketed header off uh, uh, from Jack Scoot off the crossbar. Scoot has the ball from AJ. AJ goes, he's on the left-hand side. He looks across, beats his man, sells one dummy, cuts it back straight to a Parry Hills player who clears it. Parry Hills again coming through Wallace. And that's a free kick to Parry Hills West. Yeah, pretty, pretty blatant one that from uh, Anthony yeah. D'Agostino. I think he's probably uh, they, they were both tracking back. It, I don't think there was any malice or anything in it. They just, he was just slightly in front of him. And, yeah, there was uh, a bit of a quarter. comedy of errors over that uh, goal attempt. The, the ball was just getting turned over As back and forth. And then Daniel Spud sort of yeah. broke the line and ended up getting out wide for a great beautiful cross. whip cross. Uh, and Scoot did all he could to just get something on it. Uh, it by it, doing that, it, it if anything, it was just up slightly high. He had to yeah. get up a bit higher than normal, but but he had the keeper was gone. He it, rocketed it, it, it off hit the, the other side yeah. of the bar. So. Carlo Labrino looks inside. He goes to Higginbottom. Doesn't control it. Samuel Spadovecchia does to Tate Brook. He goes wide to AJ. I think he's overcooked that, though. He has, and it's a throw-in to Parry Hills West. Yeah, good idea there from Brook. He just it overcooked was. the pass. Uh, obviously, the AJ's doing a very good job holding the ball and uh, on this left-hand side. A lot of the attacks are coming out of that side. Wallace, good first-time ball in. Dom Kane, as he does most times, gets to it and then gets to the rebound that would have gone for a corner and puts it out for a throw in. Yeah, he read that beautifully, Dom Kane. Uh, foiled the, the attack, but yeah. it was a good idea from the uh, number 14. Ebert. Ebert, to put that ball across early, it but was. Uh, well foiled from Dom Kane. Doesn't quite come to Jack Scoot the way he'd like it. Clark gets the ball out, and that's just gone forward as quickly as can. Ta uh, Nathan Brooks should... 
recover that and does. That was from the other defender in Robertson. Tate Brook. Nice kick, nice deep kick. Scoots on that, but Clark gets his head to it first. Read it a little bit better, and that's gone to Jordan Piles, the goalkeeper for Parry Hills West. 19 minutes gone, still one apiece. Savoy and Parry Hills here at Port Pirie. That's a nice ball from the Parry Hills player straight over the full back for Savoy. They again get possession in the midfield. And again, Clark gets it. See how the the, uh, the full back in Kemba, he's basically playing left wing. I think Parry Hills have gone to three at the back. And they're trying to put pressure on to try and break this deadlock, I think. Um, you, you can just see the positioning from where we are. Kemba was playing full back and now he's, he's playing wide on the left to try and expo expose uh, Savoy. That's a quick crossover. The ball's got to Johnny Labrino. Can't get any power on it from the header and it's gone straight to uh, Nathan Brook. This is where Savoy could catch um, Parry Hills West out when they, they do put a lot of men forward. The ball's come through. AJ's got the ball. They've tracked back. There's a couple of men in front of him. He's wide on the right. He's waiting for the numbers. That's a good, good crossover to Jack Scoot. He handles the ball down, tries to find Samuel Spadovecchia. Scoot might have been better off chesting that down, never shot himself, but he wasn't to know that. He put the ball in a good possession for Spadovecchia, just uh, couldn't get to it. Ball's in dispute. One in the middle by Ebert. Ebert gives it back. He gets it to Stronsky. From Noel to Kemba to Johnny Labrino. Well cut out by Anthony D'Agostino. Inside, Daniel Spadovecchia. Back to D'Agostino. Strong challenge there from the captain in Noel, who's definitely moved from the forward line back in, in the midfield and looks like he's playing a tagging role on Carlo Labrino. Throw into... Jack Scoot couldn't quite control it. Throw into Parry Hills West. Yeah, the previous piece of forward attacking play was very well done from AJ. Held the ball up once yeah. again on that left wing and found the target in Scoot, but it wasn't a cross that would uh, would lead to a header headed no. goal. But he, he held it up well, Scoot, for a, try to header it back square across the box, but uh, got cut out by the Parry Hills defence. Parry Hills West play early ball in to. Who's that? Wallace. Parry Hills West played an early ball into the box to Wallace. Wallace had a first time shot. Nathan Brook looked like he had it covered, but made sure of it. Got a hand to it. The ball tracked out. Savoy got it out for a throw in deep in Parry Hills West. About opposite the six yard box. Jack Scoot. Back to Spadovecchia. He controls the ball. <coughs> and the uh, crowd getting a little bit into it. It was a free kick to Savoy. Yeah, a bit of a crunching tackle there from Jared Noll on yeah. Sam Spadovic. He definitely uh, collected him on the way through and uh, the crowd weren't happy with that one. Kane, Daniel Spadovic here, goes up the line looking for D'Agostino. But that ball's gone out of play for a throw into Parry Hills West. It's, it's in the balance, isn't it, this game? Game's the next goal the is going to mean a lot to, uh, to both teams one way or the other. So, um, Dom Kane, with a header, finds AJ on the left. He tries to beat his man. Doesn't quite. And then the throw will go to Parry Hills West. Yes, very, very important part of the game here. This is, uh, this is a time in the game where if you score, you can get your tail up. And if you get scored on, it could be, uh, it could be uh, not devastating, but uh, there'll be a lot of pressure on the team that falls behind. As it is now, it's quite an even game, as it has been for most of the game. Um, see Savoy won, Parry Hills West won. Yeah, 20 minute, 23 minutes into the second half. It'll be interesting to see if um, any substitutions may be made later. Wallace into the box, out of the box. Nice little chip over Labrino. Gillette behind Labrino to get the ball out. He's cleared it for a throw in. Uh, no, a corner, sorry. I reckon they would have hit double figures in corners, Parry Hills. They've taken a lot, a lot of corners. Yeah, you're right. They've gone close. That could have nearly been a free kick to Parry Hills there too. Curling in, causing a lot of problems. Here it comes. Again, front post, back header from Johnny Labrino. Headed out from Anthony D'Agostino. Daniel Spadovecchia chips the ball over to no one, really. Well, to straight to Robertson from Parry Hills West. 
He looks to chip the ball back in. Carlo Labrino controls it. Daniel Spadovecchio, the ball at his feet. Gets it to D'Agostino. D'Agostino, he's onside. Gets it to Scoot. Scoot has beaten the offside trap. He's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Shoots straight to the keeper. Goal! The rebound and scores! Lovely. Jack Scoot! Number 15 for the campaign. Has nailed it. That was, to be honest, that is the first time in the whole game Parry Hills West have tried to play the offside trap and clearly it didn't work. Look, and and, and the, some of the players are having to go at the linesman. It, it's, it, it, we've got vision of this game. That was not offside. No, I mean, there is no way it's in the their world club linesman would, anyway. And, so. and look, I mean, their bench are not even complaining. They, they were right there. They could see that. Really a go out of nothing, really. Again, there. again, the Savoy, a, a Savoy now have taken a 2 1 lead. <laughs> Uh, that ball gets played forward, and uh, Samuel Spadovecchia pushed his player into the keeper, and his player's gone back and pushed Spadovecchia straight down. Jack Scoop's gone now to go at Robinson. I think the refs. This uh, bloke's he's going to get a yellow, he's going to give penalty? a penalty. Penalty. He's given a penalty. Well, that's oh my god. Oh, has well, he, has he given a penalty? I think or he has. He's calling the players over. Well, I don't know what he's he pointed to the penalty spot though. But you can't just you can't just push a player over like that. He's given him now, both, both yellow cards. I don't think it's a penalty. No, God. it's not a penalty. No. But he did, I don't know. He, he pointed to them. Well, I think he basically was calling him over. Just got me excited, Corey. I, it was a <laughs> I was very excited. Well, we just seen a goal, John. You, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm greedy. Though. It was quite physical from the uh, Parry Hills defender. Well, uh, it was a, it was a you know what? Shove. Two yellows is fair enough because Samuel Spadovecchia pushed the defender into the keeper. The defender didn't like it at all, so he just got up and pushed Samuel Spadovecchia over. Yeah, you know what? I, fair enough. I think that's, that's warranted fair too. Yeah. Double yellow card. Yeah, I think so. Well done by the ref. He, um, as we said before, the ref has had this game under control, and that that was that was that was pretty testy there, and he, he didn't have any problems at all. Uh, What's he doing now? Laying down the law. No, I think he was just still writing in the book, oh, and they okay. took the free kick, yeah. so he just. Uh, yeah. Well, I think that goal, 26 minutes in, will probably yeah. uh, see Parra Hills. Well, they, I mean, we said this about Parra Hills East last week when they got to 3-0 down. That game wasn't over. And it looks, well, now, Parra Hills West, uh, they were going for it before this. Yeah, so, no, um, oh, it's going to be all out attack now. They're not going to change no. their tactics, if anything. They're, they're going to surge forward more. Uh, Wallace got the ball. Nice crossover. Straight to the Parry's player. Dom Kane. He just, he just reads the play so well. He I'll, knew what was going to happen I think there. personally, like, it. with uh, Carlo Labrino not playing every week, maybe you could probably tell him to sit just in front of yes. Dom and Reese as the holding, mid, holding midfielder. Definitely. Comes to Jack Scoot. He chests it down. Clark's right up his clacker. And Scoot has drawn the free kick. Much to the pleasure of the... Uh, of the uh, Savoy crowd here, they're really getting into this, which so they should. It's a great game, great night, great atmosphere, great spectacle for. Uh, I'll Port tell Perry you one Sport. thing, John. If you followed Savoy this year, you would not be uh, well, short of seeing a lot of goals. Oh uh, yeah, haven't kept the clean sheet. You've seen a lot of goals from Savoy yeah. this year. Jack Scoot gets a touch on. Labrino tries to shield the ball, can't. Falls down, gets up, and gives away the free kick. Not sure why. Probably for playing on the ground. He yeah, really he, had, he had the ball between yeah, his did. legs, and yeah. that's obviously an instant free kick. Uh, Robertson, Parry Hills West. They're looking to hit back as soon as they can. Score line, Savoy 2, Parry Hills West 1. The reverse score line of this game earlier in the year was Parry Hills West 4, Savoy 3. So there still could be a couple more goals in this game yet. Stronsky turns on the ball, tries to get it through. Dom Kane, once again, clears the ball to the left-hand side, to AJ. Scoot with the ball at his feet, reads it well. Gets the ball, nearly got it to AJ over the top. The Parry Hills player tracked back fairly well, headed it, got the ball in possession and then cleared it out. I think what's good about Scoot's game too, he just brings so many people into the game. He does. Ball goes forward, drops to Wallace, should score. Oh, great, great save. save Nathan Brook. Great save from Nathan great Brook. Save. Wallace was one on one through the keeper. The keeper was on the six yard box. Wallace only had to beat the keeper and it was a goal. 
but uh, Nathan Brook got down with his right foot, got to the ball. It's gone out for another corner to be taken by Johnny Labrino. Again, the ball goes into that danger area. This time, it's another corner, and Reese Gillette got his header on that, that ball. Yeah, that chance come out of a deep free kick in the back defensive half from Para Hills and a flick on from one of the strikers to a running player in. I'm not sure who that was, but a one-on-one -on -one with Nathan Brook. And Straight to the same spot. Brook gets a punch on that. Lines gets another tap on it. Doesn't quite grab it. Ball drops. That's uh, a free kick. Free um, kick on the keeper anyhow. But uh, Nathan what, Brook had that under control. It was, actually, um, it was actually straight out from the corner. The linesman put his flag up straight away. So obviously the, oh, right, the, right, okay. the right footer had Sorry. bent the ball out before Didn't see it come that. into play. Well, but the, the ref well picked up, Corey. On. That's what you're here for, mate. Yeah, that's why I'm on the big bucks, John. I know. Um, so it's uh, so, sorry, it's a goal kick. I didn't didn't see that goal kick to Savoy. Nathan Brook, Carlo Labrino gets a fair challenge to the back. Johnny Labrino, Dom Kane again clears the ball under pressure. St straight to Stronsky, to Ebert steps over it. Labrino to Stronsky. He goes to ground. Play on. Anthony D'Agostino has the ball. Goes up to the side. Scoot lets the ball run. Stronsky has a got up yet, he's just getting up now he looks like he's okay but I think he got a fair whack to the back of the head or maybe to a yeah I think he's winded, he looks like he's he's okay though, he's I think right. he'll be okay John, 32 minutes gone, Savoy 2, Parra Hills West 1, Parra Hills West put the ball out, Savoy's giving it back so the injured player can get to his feet, he's still trying to catch his breath though He's uh, he must have got winded yeah, fairly he must well have got caught. Robinson to this is the player that's come on. He's sw switched to the other side. That's Athanasio. He's, he's switched to the right-hand side. And uh, his first kick, he's probably put straight out of play. It nearly hit us in the commentary box, John. He did. Tate Brook with a long throw. Jack Scoot gets a good header to the middle. Robertson's there, though, to clean up. Overhits it. Dan Spud gets a ball straight through. He's Labrino, one-on-one. -on -one, and oh, he's absolutely slayed no. that right. He's Absolute. tried to hit it too hard. Nah. And he could have just curled his foot around it. I think the, that's what he's gone for, the, the old corner. curl of the top corner. and it, it just hasn't done the curl. It's just side-footed yeah. straight off. Uh, I think the Parra Hills West um, spectators and coaching staff are not too happy with their man that's doing the uh, the line over there. But uh, you know what? If, uh, if you don't like it, how about someone else go and do it for him? Well, that's the old story, isn't it? That's right. Gillette gets it. Nice control by Labrino. Labrino to AJ. Slightly overhits it. Athanasio gets there. Doesn't get it. AJ's got the ball back. Tries to shield it. Goes inside. Draws a free kick. Yeah, Athanasio's going to be under a bit of pressure here, I think. Great he, holding he possession He looks like there. he's a little bit out of his depth. I was just about to make that comment, John. I think yeah, AJ... He's not quick. Might, might find some joy out of uh, yeah. number five, Athanasio. Yeah. Tate Brook with the free kick just behind halfway line for Savoy. Looking to chip it to the 18 yard box. Nice ball. Straight to AJ and Athanasio. Scoot gets in behind them. Drops to AJ, back heel around Athanasio. Left foot cross to back heel from, that was, that was a very good play awesome from play there. Samuel Spud. He, he'd over, the, he was past the, the, the front post. He knew he would run over it, so he just stepped over and flicked the ball back. Parry Hills West player there to get a ball out. Para Hills West get to the ball first though. Daniel Spadovec here, the ball at his feet. Ebert on him. They're one on one out there near the byline. Spadovec here still playing, still got it. Gets it back to D'Agostino. He gets inside, overhits it. Uh, Stronsky there to get it, but D'Agostino's got it back, but he's, uh, he's given the free kick away. Good hassle there from D'Agostino. He didn't give up on the ball, but he ended up giving away the free kick through physical uh, challenge on their D'Agostino's played football for the last four, four years, and I think uh, him coming back to soccer, he's, uh, yeah, I think it's he's a lot helped. better player, oh, soccer player now than he, than he was when he left. I think it's actually helped him because it's it actually tough and you know, got him yeah. quite himself tough on the ball. Himself scooped um, the Spadovecchia brothers. They've just, uh, they've just lit a spark into this uh, Savoy team. It's, uh, Savoy had good, a good team last year, but it's, uh, it's just as good this year, as we can see with them challenging against Division One sides. 
Labrino with a back heel gets past two uh, Parry Hills players and uh, Athanasio, as we predicted, uh, has given a foul away. He's done a, a pretty good job, Carlo Labrino, today. I think he's, someone he's who hasn't, hasn't played every yeah, game. He's, yeah. taken, he's taken some hits, he's thrown his body yeah. around, that's for sure, but he, I think he just substituted to the bench potentially for a... Yeah. Uh, he's looking... He's looking got tired. a bit of a limp on him, so I think, I think that could be... Carlo Labrino and Samuel Spadovecchia play very similar in the way that they shield the ball. Chip over from Dom Kane, but that's gone straight through the keeper. They know how to get in between the, their player and the ball and force their player to give away a free kick. I think we'll be going to the substitute bench now with 10 minutes Who to do go. you think they're going to bring on? Uh, Parry Hills West have the ball. Nice chip over. Dom Kane's there. Keeper comes out. Easily covered. Well, it looks like... Uh, uh, the, uh, Darren Cap Clinton? Yeah, I think Darren Clinton's been warming so, up. Darren Clinton, who has not played for... What, this 12 seat? months? Got uh, injured at, towards the end of last year with a severe knee injury. Didn't have to have a reconstruction. Has been rehabbing and has said to the coach that he's confident in the structure of his knee. And they're, uh, they're definitely going to test it out. It's his first game back. He hasn't even played a game of B grade. So uh, they're going to test out whether he's... Uh, whether that knee is going to stand up to the rigours of a full-on uh, under-pressure game. Well, he'll be coming to a pressure cooker uh, situation, that's Not for sure. Wrong. Especially like eight minutes to go, two one up, and you know Parry Hills are just going to throw the kitchen sink at yeah. Savoy. So um, the only thing I can think of is maybe they will put him into a defensive midfield yeah, position, I think that's which the only might position. make it a bit easier for him. Probably the only position he could go there, yeah. I reckon. Parry Hills West have the ball on the right. Stronsky looks inside. Johnny Labrino looks to beat Savoy. Can't, gets turned back. AJ tracks back, goes back to Labrino, Ebert. He chips the ball over to Robertson. Ball falls at his feet. Tate Brook gets inside, clears the ball quickly. Ben Higginbottom gets it out of the area very well. Jack Scoot tries to put pressure on. Athanasio gets it. First good touch he's had. That'll give him some confidence. Robertson looks inside to Simpson. Simpson, Athanasio again to Clark. Clark, even Clark's pushing forward to try and get something happening. Watson, again, Dom Kane, yeah, great as we've said on numerous occasions today, gets there, reads the play, gets the ball out. To the throw-in, Athanasio looks to be set, settled into the game now, but has played it to um, Robinson, but Robinson was in an offside position. I think the sub's coming up and, now, John. Uh, here comes a substitution for Savoy, which <laughs> is fairly risky. Bringing a player on who had a knee injury and hasn't, hasn't played a minute this year to come on in the pressure cooker of a, of a game where Savoy are 2-1 up with what? how long to go, Corey? Seven uh, minutes? Six, six, oh, six minutes time. plus stoppages. Yeah. It's played through. AJ's got the ball in the 18-yard box. Leaks is a shot. Just goes over the crossbar. Again, from nothing, from that stoppage yeah. in play where there was, where there was um, uh, a substitution. The ball went dead. Savoy got the ball straight away. Um, Parry Hills West, the urgency, you can see it just the way that they want to play the ball quickly. They're, uh, they're, they want to get a goal here. They want to, they want to even up this game. Tate Brook goes up for the ball. Ball comes back to Ebert. He's... On the 18, shoots, gets the ball across wide. The ball's in play. Coleman just come on, first touch. Gone out of play though. Offside. On the right hand side. Offside to the is player it, on the left. Is either offside or. Lions but had his flag up. So. Okay. The Parry Hills get to it. But uh, here's Clinton for his first touch. Got a confident touch. Overhead a little bit, but that'll, that'll give him some confidence. Uh, they didn't, didn't pull out of the didn't, challenge, no, that's for sure. Definitely didn't pull out, that's, yeah. All right, Athanasio gets it to Robertson. He can't control it. That's a throw into Savoy. Actually, Tate Brooks had a very good game today, John. He has. He's, uh, he he's up has. against a physical opponent, and he Tate has. loves the physical stuff. But well, he's, he's had their best player he's in... He's restrained himself uh, quite well, actually. He's had, his, he's had their best player in Lebrino taken off him. Lebrino's gone to centre forward now, so he can take some, uh, some credit for that too. Okay. Simpson with the ball. Robertson, he gets the ball wide. He's looking to go deep quickly. Dom Kane with the header, straight to Sammy Spadovecchia. Gets the ball wide to his brother in Daniel. Cuts it back. 
Probably a free kick. No, throw in. Throw in to D'Agostino. Four minutes to go, plus added on. Savoy, two. Para Hills West, one. D'Agostino with the throw in to Clinton. He can't control it. Off of his chest, gone out for a throw in. Para Hills West. Noel has gone out of the game, Noel, since he started tagging Carlo Labrino. Well done by Anthony D'Agostino to cut that ball off. Noel again with the ball in the midfield. He'll look to have some more influence now that, Dag that uh, Labrino's gone off. Athanasio, he gets the ball to Wallace, inside to Robertson. He gets covered, doesn't read where his player's going to go. Tate Brook, probably under no pressure, was expecting AJ to move, but he didn't. And uh, West. Just gives Savoy some time to regroup. Athanasio just gets that under pressure out of the area. Coleman can't get it. Well done by Reese Gillette. Well done by Anthony D'Agostino, who's had a fair game as well. To Scoot. Scoot can't hold his feet. The defenders kick the ball into each other, but uh, Coleman's got the ball at his feet. Parry Hills West looking to surge forward at every occasion. There's a great through ball. Well cut out by Higginbottom. That player was in there in uh, Wallace. He was, could have been through through on goal, but that's, uh, that's number seven, Simpson. I think he's, uh, he's put in a couple of fairly uh, rash challenges. He'd be lucky to not be in the book. Oh, he's going to get a talking to. But. Excellent interception there from Ben Higginbottom. Oh. He actually, I think if he didn't make that, that yeah. challenge, that, and, was, uh, that was a one-on-one -on -one for Parry Hills there. So. Hig Higginbottom looks like he's in a little bit of trouble here. He hasn't, he hasn't got well, up Well, he yet. followed up his interception with a scrappy ball and yeah, sort of... and got hit. And got cleaned up in the... In the he doesn't, he's not moving too much, is he? Uh, 17 for Parry Hills in Robinson. I think it's Rout. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I think it's Rout. Think his played. number's not in the team sheet. Uh, Dom Kane, how long have we got to go? Well, we're we're 40 a couple minute. of minutes. The ball goes forward to Scoot. He headers towards goal and keepers out to cover that. Para Hills throwing everyone forward. The keeper's just going to look to drill this as far as he can, and he does. And hits a target in Coleman, who uh, might still be a little bit cold, can't control it. The ball's gone out for throw in. Savoy would be doing well just to waste a bit of time here if they can. They're probably going to be, what, three minutes oh, of stoppages at least three. from the referee, there I was, think. There was that incident. There's been three or four subs. Yeah. Scoot with the ball inside. Athanasio gets it. He just surges it forward. To Kane. Kane straight to AJ. He can't control it. The player that just come on, not sure he is, number nine. Gets it to, to Wallace. Wallace has beaten one player. Can't get past Tate Brook. Has a shot on goal. Oh, that was going in. Love that was strike. a good shot. And again, Nathan Brook stretched as far as he could. Got his hand to the ball and just tipped it over I the think crossbar. He got by some uh, Nathan Brook gets a Great hand on that to get it out. Darren Clinton gets a good touch to get it out. Scoot's got the ball at his feet. Chests it down. Can't quite control it. Gets Goes to Clark. Clark's looking to go forward. Hits Scoot in the back. And then ricochets off and Noel. Scoot picks the ball up. Throws it in quickly to AJ. But Clark's there, which that's fine for Savoy. Get the ball up that end. Don't take your time. Leave the ball. Get it in. Leave the ball Don't there. worry. No, worry, because this game is far from over, ladies and gents. Well, we're far moving into our over. second minute of stoppage time, John. Uh, be close. What are we at, Corey? We're at 46 and a half, so the balcony's probably a getting minute, quite vocal. minute and a half to go, I'd say. The balcony's very vocal and very, uh, or the bar's very open. well refreshed as well. Let's <laughs> just put it that way. Um, AJ has the ball in that corner, which is... Uh, no, go. he thought it was the uh, corner, but the referee's given a goal kick, and... Um, as you would expect, Parry Hills West are right on this. The, the uh, refs looked at his watch. Parry Hills West go deep as they can. Clinton goes up. Cart gets it. Goes through. Parry Hills West have got the ball here. It's a free kick. Yeah, good foul yeah. there from Gillette. Was it, though? Yeah, I think... Oh, was it? I don't know. I, th I, I think if he got past him there, he, was, uh, he could have caused some trouble there. I mean, yeah, 35, 35 yards out. It was Labrino on the ball. Um... It's going to take Reece something Gillette. special to beat. Reese Gillette has, um, has got a yellow card from that. Um, this could be it. This could I be the game right here. I think this is actually right the here. last piece of play right here, John. Uh, the ref's going to so, let him take this free kick, and that's it. So I'd say... Uh, 
Parry Hills West about 25 out, probably straight in front. 25? Right. I've, oh. I think probably a little bit further, Doc. I think that's probably 30. 30 yards. Right in line, straight up the middle he is, and this is Robinson's going to have a shot by the looks of it. And he does. It hits Gillette in the head. The ball gets cleared out. AJ gets the ball first. He headers it back inside. Gets back on it. Shields it well. Gets past one. Gets past Athanasio. Gets past another one. Gets it to Samuel Spadovecchia. Ben Higginbottom touches it on the line to Cl Clark intercepts. But that'll That's do it. for Savoy. And that is game over. Take a bow the Savoy Soccer Club and their players, coaches and everyone involved because for them to be able to come into this competition playing against Division 1 teams and knocking another one off this week in Parra Hills West sees them on the ladder go to equal points with Parra Hills West and one goal difference. So uh, that sees now Parra Hills West on 12 points, Savoy on 12 points, Parra Hills West in front with one goal, goal difference. But again, Port Pirie has turned on another great night, another great game, and uh, um, hopefully everyone's enjoyed the coverage. Okay, welcome to the uh, after-match uh, interview with the Labrino brothers tonight. The uh, the Labrino Cup, Cup was played here in Port Piri, uh, unofficial Labrino Cup. Um, we have uh, the two brothers here, um, Carlo for Savoy and Johnny for Parra Hills West. So first of all, boys, uh, great game tonight. Um, that takes the aggregate to uh, five all, I believe. So um, who do you think uh, out of the two teams has got the most out of? Uh, out of both both of the games. We'll go to Carlo first. Oh well, first game really. Parrios West absolutely battered us. First 10, 15 minutes, we just dropped our heads, went down three 0 Fought back hard, but they were just too good to side. And I think over here, playing on our ground, our crowd, they had the trip up. It's a little bit different for their bodies. Um, they're probably not used to it as much as what we are. Um, and we just, I think, came out second half for a go. Jack Scoot with another two fantastic goals. He's been in sensational form. So we just kept looking to feed him. Um, and I think that we just, yeah, we just did enough that second half um, to just push through. Um, get the three points. And your thoughts, Johnny? Yeah, no, I think he said it perfectly. Realistically, yeah, the first game, you know, we started off strong, absolutely, and credit to Savoy, you know, they come back, that's what they do. The second they get a glimpse of a goal, they go full on. Um, and Jack Scoot has always been incredible for him. We're coming here today, we knew he was going to be one to watch, and, you know, he got the better of us at the end. They scored two goals. Um, in saying that as well, we know that Savoy is a fortress here, so, you know, we knew it was going to be a tough battle, but I guess the better team at the end of day one today, I thought, so, yeah, it was a tough game. So just this next question to Johnny first. From the last game that you played against Savoy to this game, did the coach change the tactics in any way? Because I know myself watching the first game, it looked like the fullbacks pushed up really high in the first game, whereas they didn't do that till probably the second half of this game. Was that was that anything that he, he specifically went for, or was that just the way the game panned out? No, not necessarily. We try, the way we play, we try to get our wingers as high as we can. I think it's just the way the game played out in the end. Yeah, um, yeah they were just, like you said, the high press, that kind of kept our fullbacks staying wide. I think AJ and the wing kept sneaking up, so it makes you full back question whether to go commit or whether to stay within. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all it was at the end of the day. We tried to push up as much as we can, just didn't work out. So. What about from Savoy's point of view, Carlo? Did, were the tactics pretty much the same as, as usual? Anything different that the coach spoke about? Oh, the side was pretty much the same. Um, in terms of tactics, we just said that we need 11 people working. Um, because last time we played and we had a couple working here and there, no one was supporting. Whereas this time, you know, we started off a little bit slow. Um, you could just see as soon as that goal went in, that we, we started to lift, got into, stuck into a couple of challenges, um, and then everyone just put, put that effort in. When you've got a whole team working, it's really hard for another team to stop you unless they're trying to match you. So I think we just got them the better in today, especially on a bit, bit of a bigger pitch as well. I think that plays into our favour. Um, and we knocked it around really nicely again in that second half. So no, no real tactic change, just that work effort, effort is here, um, here at home. So just to you, Johnny, like a bit of insight after the game, but obviously the coach wouldn't have been happy with, with the outcome, but um, like watching the game, it, it was it was a 50-50 game pretty much. Savoy so got a couple of chances, but they happened to slip one in. Um, what was the coach's thoughts after the game? Uh, 
I mean, he said it perfectly. It was a 50-50 game. He thought the same thing. But at the end of the day, I think it was that you guys wanted it more. Um, every second ball you were on top of it, we were just too slow to react. And ultimately, that was what won you guys a game, getting the ball behind on the counter nice and quick. And yeah, that was the difference. It's all in our hands, I think, now. I think we're equal on points, if that's correct. Yeah. Is that right? So, yeah, yeah it comes You're down to goal, the final. One goal, goal. Yeah, 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 it comes down to the final. I think we both got down to the play as well. So, yeah, that's it. it's into by the team's hands. Really, really steps up and takes it from here. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Carlo, just um, just for the Savoy people, um, I, I think a lot of Savoy supporters were were a bit wary of Savoy being drawn in a group against Division One sides, and the last two weeks uh, coming here and seeing how Savoy have played against those Division One teams are obviously going to keep them, hold them in good stead for next year. Um, what are your thoughts on the team from this year compared to last year? I know there's one player who I would like to see playing in Savoy's side this year. He's standing next to me. But what are your thoughts? I know it's different personnel. Similar style, but what are your thoughts on the comparison of the two teams? Um, guys, I think Johnny put it perfectly actually from last year. As soon as we came to this ground here, um, we just said, let's make this a fortress. You know, this is a brand new state. Well, I think we've lost maybe one game. One. One, one game in two years. So that's sensational. So I think really just playing at home, we, we showed Div 1 teams that we can really um, make it a fortress. It's hard to play against us here. In terms of personnel, bring in uh, you know, an out-and-out striker and back to um, Sam and Dan um, have added, Douglas has added that. Just that experience, yeah. um, a bit of pace too, um, and, and they link up well. They all link up really, really well. So, you know, everything that's happening in training is coming out from the park. And it's just, you know, when we come out here, like what he said, I'll say it again and again, again. It's just, when we come here, we want to protect our, our home ground and make it that, you know, it's a hard place to come up to and play us, play against us. Um, and never know, maybe Johnny will be back next year. So just um, just to wrap it up, Johnny, just, do you think, um, because Savoy is used to travelling a lot, do you think, I mean, I know you're, you're probably used to it because you did it mostly yeah. last year, do you think that had any effect at all on your side, not being used to like, two hours sitting in the bus, coming out, having to prepare, different different ground, do you think that had any effect? And you think, obviously that's going to be an advantage for Savoy. Savoy's done that their whole playing career. For these teams to just do it on a one-off basis, do you think it had any effect? on the game at all? Uh, I think it definitely does, absolutely, but in saying that you can't put it to that reason. That, you know, that's not the reason we come up here and lose. We're very well aware that we're going to have to tra uh, travel eventually to come up here. Um, and we prayed, you know, we prepared. So we did everything we could, thought, you know, yeah, did everything right, and yeah, this, at the end of the day, we just did what it was. Didn't perform, so. All right, well, thanks very much for the two Labrino boys. So we can officially say that's a draw because they've both won one and they've both uh, scored five goals each. So uh, thanks, boys, for coming along. Thanks, Carlo. Thanks, Jay. thanks, Johnny. Great to see you, mate. Hopefully we'll see you next year, mate. OK, thank you from Port Perry West Oval for this coverage of Port Perry versus Port Perry Savoy versus Parry Hills West. Thank you. Uh, round eight of the Freddie Pine Shield sees Savoy 2, Parra Hills West 1. Thanks again and we'll join you again in two weeks time.